the uh, <coughs> Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Cabinet Ministers, Honourable MPs, <coughs> Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on the 2016-27 Daily National Budget. Madam Speaker, today we've had some very entertaining speeches. We started with tax tricks. We went from, from there we went to tourism being turned into terrorism. And then we found an elephant in the house. <laughs> All I can say, Madam Speaker, is the best description for the other side of the house that it sounds like it's a rampaging bull in a porcelain china shop. <laughs> no sense of order. Madam Speaker, I first would like to thank the Honourable Minister for Economy and Attorney General for delivering a forward-looking and all-inclusive budget that will put Fiji and the Fijian people back on their feet following Cyclone Winston. And it's about long-term sustainability, economic growth and building a resilient and robust nation. Madam Speaker, I do not know what the Honourable Biman Prasad meant in stating that the budget had no theme. The Honourable Prime Minister earlier today articulated the theme and the vision of this budget, which has been consistent with the previous Fiji First budget, and it is to empower all Fijians and specifically to respond to the socio-economic needs of the disadvantaged people, with a view, Madam Speaker, to breaking the vicious cycle of poverty. Madam Speaker, I have one question. Does the opposition want the Fiji First government to abandon the victims of Cyclone Winston and neglect the poorest of our society? Madam Speaker, the Fiji First Government will not neglect its duties and will deliver on its commitments to the Fijian people. Madam Speaker, before I go into the substance of my budget response, as a matter of principle, it is incumbent upon me to correct the misinformation and blatant disregard for facts being promoted by the opposition to mislead Fijian people. The opposition has not provided any concrete ideas or solutions to moving the Fijian economy forward. The gist of the opposition's response is based on smokes and mirrors. Madam Speaker, with regard to the figures quoted by the opposition, that the poverty rate in Fiji is above 32 percent is a clear misrepresentation of information. Madam Speaker, the Fiji Bureau of Statistics in 2013-2014 Household and Income Expenditure Survey has calculated the rate of poverty in Fiji as at 28.1%, which is a reduction from 35% in 2002-2003. Madam Speaker, the Household and Income Expenditure Survey is an internationally accepted measure for assessing the poverty rate. And I'm not sure where the opposition is getting their information from, and I urge them to refrain from engaging in propaganda. Madam Speaker, the opposition continues to operate as a demagogue trying to appeal to desires rather than using rational arguments. And as, a, as an example, the opposition has gone to the media and made claims that the Honourable Minister for Economy heads nine ministerial portfolios, which, Madam Speaker, is incorrect. The opposition lacks understanding of government processes and demarcation between ministries and independent entities such as the DPP's office, Judiciary, Fiji's Elections Office and FICAC. It is a shame that Honourable Bolitavo, being a lawyer, failed to understand the difference. If the opposition wants more ministers, they should understand that it is not the size of the government that matters, but the ability to deliver. This budget, Madam Speaker, is about empowering people, particularly the most marginalised and most vulnerable in our society. Madam Speaker, a strong micro, small and medium enterprise sector has been recognised globally as an essential ingredient towards achieving inclusive and sustainable economic growth. MSMEs are the bedrock of any developing economy and they ensure grassroots com communities uh, who are on the fringes of economic development are formalized and brought into the mainstream. Madam Speaker, on various occasions I have updated this August House on the Micro and Small Business Grant Scheme because, Madam Speaker, I consider this a very important initiative for the Fijian people. This has been one of government's most successful schemes in terms of providing support to the ones who need it the most. As the Honourable Minister of Economy had said, Fijian people are hard-working and resourceful. And with the support of the grant, they have shown the ability to excel 
and achieve the best for themselves, their families and their communities. Madam Speaker, through the Micro and Small Business Grant Initiative, we have empowered 5,853 Fijians to venture into business to support their families and their communities. This initiative is part of our broader efforts to formalize and tap into the potential of the informal sector. Madam Speaker, this initiative is an example of assisting the most marginalized and disadvantaged in our communities. The opposition believes that we should not spend this money and assist those that need it to, uh, the most and empower them towards sustainable livelihood. Madam Speaker, the Micro Small Business Grant is an example of targeted form of assistance to the grassroots community which should be supported by all, including the opposition, rather than harping on about the removal of VAT on basic food items that, are, that also benefits the well off. Madam Speaker, it is rather unfortunate that a number of these recipients of the grants have been badly affected by Cyclone Winston. Therefore, Madam Speaker, through the 2016-2017 allocation of $6.4 million, we will provide them with the necessary support to re-establish their businesses. Madam Speaker, the Fijian government is not alone in its efforts to grow the MSME sector. The Indian government has seen the potential and has committed $4.7 million towards this particular program, and an, our memorandum of agreement was recently signed to formalize this commitment. Madam Speaker, despite the enormous strides, uh, strides achieved through the, uh, the grant scheme, the Fijian government wishes to fully harness the potential of the MSME sector. In Fiji's case, the sector is currently estimated to contribute about 15% to the Fijian GDP. And we are compiling key economic indicators of the, of the sector to ascertain accurately the MSME sector's overall contribution to employment, sectorial breakdown of activities, or contributions to exports. And furthermore, the Fijian government will enhance coordination across the MSME sector to harness the full potential of that particular sector. Madam, sector, Madam Speaker, in comparison to other developing countries in South Asia where MSMEs thrive, the sector's contribution to GDP ranges from 30 to 60 percent due to the establishment of a comprehensive MSE development frameworks, a framework and infrastructure and the effective implementation and monitoring mechanisms put in place by these countries. Madam Speaker, Honourable Gavoko's statement in this regard belies the archaic and regressive thinking of the opposition. The Fiji First Government is striving to achieve the economic empowerment of all Fijians and to ensure that no Fijian is left behind, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in order to build the resilience of the Fijian economy and its people, we will provide support to the people of Fiji in a collaborative manner. Therefore, all future MSME development will be governed by the MSME policy framework, which will immediately set up the MSME Council of Fiji to be chaired by the Honourable Prime Minister and will comprise of ministers from key ministries who have a prominent role in the development of the MSME sector. The allocation of $300,000 in the budget will assist in the establishment of an apex body that will be governed by the National Council. This will provide much needed stewardship and policy direction to address the shortcomings and propel the development of the MSME sector in Fiji by ensuring that appropriate legal and institutional frameworks are in place. The proposed APEX body will consolidate all the programs and projects related to the MSME sector and address common issues such as access to finance, market access, economies of scale and capacity building. Fijian people can be rest assured that these efforts will yield positive results in terms of enhanced coordination and more efficient service delivery to the MSME sector. Madam Speaker, the creation of the body will enable a focused approach to the development of MSMEs, and which is why this year's budget has also incorporated the Northern Development Program and the Integrated Human Resources Development Program under the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism. Madam Speaker, this collaborative and consistent approach has been tried and tested under the Fijian Trade Policy Framework for trade and investment, and therefore the continued support of $100,000 will ensure the efficient implementation of this important strategic tool that also includes growing the MSME sector to consolidate Fiji's position as an internationally competitive economy and a regional trading hub. Madam Speaker, the Ministry will also continue to implement the national export strategy that provides support to business, including MSMEs that are exporting or are on the verge of exporting. This program is successfully diversifying and adding value to our exports and increasing our presence in the global value chain. The NES has also created 329 people being gainfully employed. 
Mr. Speaker, allow me also to, uh, to illustrate the direct success of the NES program. Over the past nine years, Mr. Speaker, a total of 70 projects have been supported, and these companies have increased their net export revenue by $31.7 million and have penetrated 19 new markets. Mr. Speaker, in our tourism sector, the Ministry has undertaken a number of initiatives that have made Fiji a top class tourism destination. The opposition again has used inaccurate figures to mislead the people of Fiji. The growth in visitor arrivals over the past five years is an average of 4% rather than the 2% as claimed by the Honourable Prasad. The Honourable Member has conveniently forgotten that the tourism industry has successfully overcome consecutive natural disasters and external economic shocks in earlier years and rebounded strongly. The industry has grown from strength to strength and remains the backbone of the Fijian economy. Madam Speaker, rather than sitting on our laurels and being complacent, the Fijian government has invested in the future of the industry to diversify our tourism products and attract high-value visitors. The investment by the Fijian government in sports tourism has created a distinct niche for Fiji, which has immediate and long-term benefits. Madam Speaker, the Super Rugby match held over the weekend has given the Fijian brand an unprecedented level of exposure in the international market. And through this one game, we Fijians have shown that as a nation, we have what it takes to host international tournaments. This, Madam Speaker, has opened doors for Fiji to be the destination for more international sporting events. Madam Speaker, through this historical match, the Fijian-made brand and Fijian tourism reached over 150 countries around the world, having a broadcast value of millions of dollars. Madam Speaker, the Ministry will be undertaking a comprehensive assessment of the positive effects of the rugby match in the domestic market. However, as the Honourable Prime Minister has said, what this one match has done to lift the spirit and the confidence of the nation cannot be quantified by a mere dollar value. Similarly, Madam Speaker, the continued support to the Fiji International PGA Tournament enables the Ministry and Tourism Fiji to continue marketing Fiji globally, something which they probably don't understand. Madam Speaker, from 2016, Fiji International is, is now part of the European tour, which positions Fiji well in Europe's emerging markets. The change in the PGA tour ties in well with the introduction of the direct flight to Singapore and to San Francisco. And in terms of return on investment, 16 countries participated in the golf tournament last year, Madam Speaker, with the event broadcast covering over 30 countries. The Fiji International and Fiji Tourism brands combined provided a gross media value of $32.6 million. And our brand visibility increased by 41% as broadcast hours increased by 29% to 520, uh, 594 hours from 2014. With the elevation to the European tour status, we expect these figures to increase exponentially. The direct economic benefits of hosting this event are not only restricted to monetary term returns, but expand to local suppliers' engagement, engagement of local labor force, local food sellers, and handicraft sellers. And as we can, may I also mention that the average spend per golfer in Asia is US $3,000, which converts to a minimum of about $5,000 Fijian dollars per golfer. In comparison with the average spend per normal or mainstream visitor Fiji who spends an average of about Fijian $2,100, we can say that the spend by one golfer equates to the approximate spending of three visitors to Fiji. Madam Speaker, the newspaper article being referred to by the Honorable Prasad regarding the service turnover tax and environment levy is once again an attempt to politicize the issue. The opposition fails to recognize that the benefits from the tourism sector now have a far-reaching impact on the lives of ordinary Fijians, including efforts to adapt to climate change and create a sustainable industry. I assure you, Madam Speaker, that the businesses being referred to by Honorable Prasad are making money with extended operating hours, which members of some of the opposition may be benefiting from. Madam Speaker, this continued support combined with the upward trajectory in visitor numbers and earnings puts us on course to surpass the targeted tourism earnings of $2 billion before 2020. Madam Speaker, we have successfully integrated the Fijian Made by Fijian campaign into the tourism sector with the Fijian crafted brand. And a total of 176 carters have now been licensed under the campaign, leading, leading to new streams of income for these individuals. Madam Speaker, under the program, the Ministry, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture, is establishing the Fijian organic brand, 
The Fijian organic brand will provide premium prices for our exports, ignite our youth to take up organic farming, promote sustainable and environmentally uh, friendly farming methods and reduce dependence on chemical fertilizers and promote healthier lifestyles to combat NCDs. And as early as last week, the three ministries being the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Agriculture and my ministry got together to kickstart the program. Madam Speaker, as stated by the Honourable Attorney General and the Minister for Economy, we need to expand our economic base and there is an urgent need to strengthen the resilience of the Fijian economy in order to prevent future catastrophic natural disasters from crippling our economy and destroying the livelihoods of our people. The government is fully committed to encouraging greater diversification contrary to popular belief of the Fijian economy and creating new pillars of growth so that we are not overly reliant on one or two sectors. Madam Speaker, we have a strong manufacturing base and world-class ICT connectivity combined with a young and talented workforce. It is important that we market and provide the right incentives for these sectors. In that note, Madam Speaker, an allocation of $500,000 is for the services and manufacturing zone. These funds will ena enable the Ministry to carry out preparatory work for the establishment of a fully-fledged services and manufacturing zone in the Western Division. And site inspections have already been con conducted. Once completed, Madam Speaker, the zone will combine world-class infrastructure and connectivity with plug-and-play facilities and the necessary support services suitable for light manufacturing activities, not to mention support for ICT-related operations such as business proce process outsourcing and call centers. These operations will provide a myriad of opportunities for both unskilled and skilled workers and complement the government's vision of inclusive growth. Madam Speaker, the government will also develop a tailor-made investment uh, incentives package to attract investors, both domestic and foreign. This zone will attract new investments that will generate maximum economic benefits for the Fijian people and build economic resilience. Madam Speaker, the implementation of this project will have tremendous benefits for the economy in the Western Division as it will provide a platform for investors to quickly set up operations that can create thousands of jobs, increase exports to our uh, key international markets and generate foreign exchange earnings. It will also support the government's policy of encouraging value addition activities that enhance Fiji's ability uh, to, to benefit from global value chains. Madam Speaker, the Fijian government has focused on building a modern knowledge-based economy. In this regard, for the past budget, the Majesty Ministry of Economy has allocated a significant portion of the budget to education. The trade policy framework also recognizes the investment in human resource development as a key ingredient, Madam Speaker, to enhancing Fiji's competitiveness as, a human, uh, as human capital is a major contributor to increasing productivity, growth, and can be the source of unique competitive advantages. One key challenge for employers in Fiji, Madam Speaker, is sourcing skilled workers and professionals, and the government has recognized a vacuum in various industries. Madam Speaker, our unprecedented and sustained periods of economic growth is one of the reasons for the high demand of skilled professionals. An example is the booming construction industry activities that have led to the shortage of uh, professional workers in the sector. Madam Speaker, in complementing uh, this, a new law has also passed by Parliament for the registration of skilled professionals, and this act is necessary to give Fijians and Fijian businesses greater skill access to skilled professionals. Madam Speaker, I wish to reiterate that the business and investor confidence also is at an all-time high. We, have ex we are experiencing three years of investments of about over 25% of the GDP. And one of the reasons why investments is at an all-time high, amongst other reasons, is our streamlined taxation system. We cannot believe that Honorable Gavoka would criticize a policy that has given us a competitive edge in the region and ignited private sector investments. This policy has also contributed to greater compliance with our tax policies. We are increasingly becoming a modernized nation and the demands and the needs of the consumers are const constantly evolving with the changes in technology, domestically and internationally. And in order to ensure that whilst new and improved services uh, products are available, consumers must have the confidence in the product, product uh, of, or service that they are purchasing. In this regard, Madam Speaker, the, also the DNTMS uh, has been, been granted $2.7 million so that they can be better equipped, especially after Cyclone Winston. And the Ministry, through the Fijian Building Standards Committee, chaired by a professional engineer, is working to develop a wide range of building uh, and building material standards. Madam Speaker, this committee has reviewed standards and the revised vision, version of the standards will be gazetted in a few years. Madam Speaker, in conclusion, I wish to reiterate that the 2016-2017 budget programs and provisions represent a consistent and focused vision of the Fiji First Government to make our economy resilient to external and climactic shocks. This is a budget for the future of Fiji, Madam Speaker, and for the Fijian people. 
And Madam Speaker, my ministry will do all it can to implement the progressive and forward-looking initiatives contained in the 2016-2017 national budget, and I wholeheartedly support the budget. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for allowing me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Now,